Hi dear students, welcome you all once again into the world of econometrics. I hope that all you had covered my earlier discussions on autocorrelation. This is the third part of our discussion on autocorrelation. In the first and the second part, we had familiarized the concept of autocorrelation, its definition, reasons for autocorrelation, and the estimation in the presence of autocorrelation. Today, the subject matter of our discussion is on various methods for the detection of autocorrelation. First, we will discuss about the graphical method. Then, we will move on some important tests for detecting autocorrelation. Runs test, Durbin Watson D test, and the Bruce Godfrey test are some of the tests that we are going to discuss today. There are different methods to detect autocorrelation. These methods may vary from graphical methods to various tests for detecting autocorrelation. We briefly discuss each method here. Graphical method is a visual examination of the residuals. It gives, some, it gives us some clues about the, some ideas about the likely presence of autocorrelation in the disturbance terms. Actually, a visual examination of UT or UT square can provide useful information not only about the autocorrelation but also about heteroscedasticity, model inadequacy or specification bias. There are various ways for examining the residuals. To detect the presence of autocorrelation, we can plot and observe the pattern of residuals obtained from ordinary least square estimation. We can observe and thus detect whether the error term of the regression model is related to each other in two ways. Firstly, we can plot the residuals against time or space and observe if there exists a distinct pattern. Secondly, we can plot the successive residuals against each other, that is, against its own lagged values. Again, if we observe any pattern in the residual plot, it confirms autocorrelation. We can use time sequence plots where we simply plot the error term against time. It shows the residuals obtained from a regression. Alternatively, we can plot the standardized residuals against time. You can see in the diagram the time se sequence plot of actual error time and the standardized error time. The standardized residuals are simply the residuals divided by the standard error of the regression. That is, they are u hat t divided by sigma hat. Notice that u hat t and sigma hat are measured in the units in which the regression y is measured. The residual plot and the standardized residual plot given in the figure indicate autocorrelation because as you, as you can see the figure exhibit a clear pattern indicating non-randomness among the residual terms. The successive residuals are tend to cluster on one side of the zero line or other. The values of the standardized residual will be a pure number and can be compared with the standardized residuals of other regressions. Moreover, the standardized residuals like you had to have zero mean and approximately unit variance. That is, standardized residuals have zero mean and approximately unit variance. In large samples, you had t divided by standard error is approximately normally distributed with zero mean and unit variance. We can also plot the residuals against its own lagged values. That is, plot the residuals at a time t against their value at a time t minus 1. A kind of empirical test of the autoregressive order 1 scheme. An example is shown here. As this figure shows, 
most of the residuals are clustered in the second and fourth that is northeast and southwest quadrants second and fourth quadrants suggesting a strong positive correlation in the residuals a positive autocorrelation is identified by identified by a clustering of residuals with the same sign a negative autocorrelation is identified by fast changes in the signs of consecutive residuals graphical method that we have just discussed although powerful and suggestive suffer from a serious drawback that it is subjective or qualitative in nature there are also a large number of qualitative quantitative tests that can also be used to supplement the purely qualitative approach we now consider some of these tests runs test of randomness also known as geary test or wald wolfowitz runs test was developed by mathematicians abraham wald he is a he is a hungarian mathematician and uh, polish born american mathematician jacob wolfowitz the runs test is similar to geary's c test of autocorrelation developed by robert charles geary an, an irish statistician runs test is a non parametric test which examine the pattern of residuals by observing the residuals that may be positive or negative it examine the pattern of the residuals not the size of the residuals a run is defined as a series of increasing values or a series of decreasing values to explain the runs test let's let's simply note down the signs simply note down the signs that is positive or negative signs of the residuals obtained from our data take a hypothetical example here suppose we have 40 observation of which we get nine successive negative residuals followed by 21 positive residuals and then followed by 10 negative residuals together it form total 40 observation you look at uh, the pattern given here now what is a run more prefi- more more precisely we can define a, a run as an uninterrupted sequence of one symbol or attribute such as plus, plus or minus the length of a run is the number of elements in it in our example we have three runs a run of 9 minuses a run of 21 pluses and a run of 10 minuses by examining how runs behave in a strictly random sequence of observations one can derive a test of randomness of runs we ask this question are the three runs observed in our illustrative example consisting of 40 observation too many or too few compared with the number of ex- runs expected in a strictly random sequence of 40 observation is if there are too many runs it would mean that in our example the residuals change sign frequently thus indicating negative serial correlation similarly if there are too few runs residuals are this is this indicate residuals are clustered in one particular sign then clustered in another sign that is the residuals do not change their signs frequently then this may suggest positive autocorrelation let n is the total number of observation that is n1 plus n2 where n1 is the number of positive residuals and n2 is the number of negative residuals r is equal to the number of runs now we define the runs test as 
with the, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis the null hypothesis is the successive outcomes are independent independent that is the sequence was produced in a random manner the alternative hypothesis is the sequence was not produced in a random manner this under the null hypothesis the successive outcomes that is here it means residuals are independent and assuming that n1 is greater than 10 and the n2 is greater than 10 that is we assume that our case is a large sample case the number of runs is normally distributed that is asymptotically normally distributed with the mean is equal to 2n1 n2 by n plus 1 and variance of the run is equal to 2n1 n2 into 2n1 n2 minus n divided by n square into n minus 1 plus 1 and we use the test statistics here is the z statistics which is obtained by the total number of runs minus the mean of the runs divided by variance of the runs this z statistics that is z this z statistics derived from r minus expectation of r divided by sigma square r fo follows normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance If the null hypothesis of randomness is sustainable, following the properties of the normal distribution, we should expect R, that is, the number of runs, should lie between the following confidence interval. That is, the probability of constructing a confidence interval which include the R is 95%, and this con these confidence intervals are constructed by uh, expectation R plus or minus 1.96 into standard error of r so then we do have a decision rule here do not reject the null hypothesis of randomness with a 95 percent of confidence if r the number of runs lies within the confidence interval reject the null hypothesis if the estimated r lies outside these limits now return to our examples we know that n is the number of runs which includes n1 the number of minuses and n2 number of pluses here n1 is the number of minuses that is 19 and n2 that is the number of pluses is 21 and r is equal to 3 using the formula given we obtain expectation r is equal to 10.975 that is mean of r is equal to 10.975 and the variance of r is equal to 9.6936 standard error of r that is the square root of variance is equal to 3.1134 thus the 95 percent confidence interval for r in the example can be calculated as expectation r plus or minus 1.96 into standard error of r that is 10.975 plus or minus 1.96 into 3.11 <coughs> this gr uh, gives us two confidence intervals one, one is the lower confidence interval is 4.87 upper confidence interval is 17.07 .07. obviously we know that this confidence interval does not include 3 Hence, we can reject the null hypothesis that the residuals are random with a 95% confidence. In other words, the residual exhibit autocorrelation. As a general rule, if there is positive autocorrelation, the number of runs will be few. Whereas, if there is negative autocorrelation, the number of runs will be many. So far, we discussed about the runs test which is a non-parametric test now we need to discuss about some parametric test too here we are going to discuss about two popular parametric tests the first one is Durbin-Watson D-test 
and the second one is Bruce Godfrey or BG test. One among the most celebrated tests for detecting serial correlation is the one developed by statisticians James Durbin, an Englishman, and Jeffrey Watson, an Australian statistician. It is popularly known as Durbin Watson D statistic or DW statistic. It is used to look for a specific type of serial correlation that is AR1 process, autoregressive of order 1 process. It may not be useful when there is more, uh, when there is uh, higher order autocorrelation that is AR2 or AR3 processes. Here also we starts with the null and alternative hypothesis just like a any other test of autocorrelation the null hypothesis here is the successive outcomes are independent simply the null hypothesis is there is no first order autocorrelation and therefore the alternative hypothesis become the first order autocorrelation exists or there is first order autocorrelation the Durbin Watson D statistics can be defined as D is equal to sigma ut minus ut minus 1 all square divided by sigma ut square. So, which means D is simply the ratio of the sum of squared differences in successive residuals to the residual sum of squares. You note that in the numerator of the D statistics, T uh, runs from 2 to n and in the denominator t runs from 1 to n that means in the numerator of the d statistics the number of observation is n minus 1 this is due to the loss of one observation while taking successive differences a great advantage of d statistics is that it is based on the estimated residuals which are routinely computed in our regression analysis because of this advantage it is now a common practice to report Durbin Watson D statistics by most of the software packages along with uh, other summary measures such as R square adjusted R square T and F statistics although it is now routinely used this important note the assumptions underlying the D statistics we can list five important assumptions here first one is that the regression model should include in the intercepted term in other way the DW test is not applicable when the intercepted term is absent in the model if it is not present as in the case of regression through origin it is essential to rerun the regression including the intercepted term to obtain residual sum of squares there are some relaxations to this assumptions were made in later years one such improvement is done by r w fair brother who was calculated d values even when the intercepted term is absent second assumption is that the explanatory variable that is the excess are non-stochastic or fixed in repeated sampling third assumption is the disturbances that is disturbance terms are generated by the first order autoregressive scheme that is ut is equal to rho into ut minus 1 plus epsilon t therefore it cannot be used to detect higher order autoregressive schemes there are some generalizations to dw statistics for higher order autocorrelation but we are not discussing it right now and <coughs> fourth assumption is that the error term ut is assumed to be normally distributed fifth assumption is the regression model does not include the lagged values of the dependent variable as one of the explanatory variable. Thus, the test is inapplicable in models of the type 
y t is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 t plus beta 3 x 3 t plus etc plus beta k x k t plus y gamma y t minus 1 plus u t where y t minus 1 is the one period lagged value of y so such models uh, cannot be uh, Durbin Watson statistics cannot be used for such models and the last assumption is that there are no missing observations in the data the D statistics make no allowance for missing observations these are the assumptions for computing using DW statistics the exact sampling distribution or probability distribution <coughs> of the D statistics is difficult to derive because as Durbin and, and Watson have shown it depends in a complicated way on the X values the diffic this difficulty should be understandable because D is computed from the error term u hat t which are of course dependent on the given explanatory variable x s therefore the critical value of d at any significance level depends on the number of explanatory variables in the regression equation and the number of observations in the sample unfortunately it also depends on the particular values taken by the explanatory variable thus it is not possible to construct a table giving the exact critical values for all possible samples therefore unlike t test f test and chi square test there is no unique critical value that will lead to the rejection or the acceptance of the null hypothesis what is the null hypothesis for us here it is the null hypothesis is that there is no first order serial correlation or autocorrelation in the disturbances however Durbin and Watson were successful in deriving a lower bound and upper bound such that if the computed D lies outside these critical values outside the lower bound that is outside the lower bound and outside the upper bound a decision can be made regarding the presence of positive or negative serial correlation moreover these limits depends only on the number of observations n and the number of explanatory variable and do not depend on the values taken by this explanatory variable the actual test procedure is started by setting up of the null and alternative hypothesis then we define d in terms of the equation sigma u hat t minus u hat t minus 1 all square divided by sigma u hat t square now we expand d you can simply recall the algebra for a minus b all squared then we get d is equal to sigma u hat t square plus sigma u hat t minus 1 all square minus 2 into sigma into u hat t into u hat t minus 1 divided by sigma u hat t square since sigma u hat t square and sigma u hat t minus 1 square differ only in only one observation they are approximately equal therefore setting sigma u hat t minus 1 square approximately equal to sigma u hat t square the above equation can be written as d is approximately equal to 2 into 1 minus sigma u hat t into u hat t minus 1 all divided by sigma u hat t square the derivation of this equation is given in the text box in the right side of the slide kindly go through it now we have seen earlier that the autocorrelation coefficient rho is obtained from the covariance divided by variance formula that is rho hat is equal to sigma u hat t into u hat t minus 1 divided by sigma u hat t squared it is the sample first order 
coefficient of autocorrelation the estimator of rho using this equation can be expressed the dubbin watson statistics as d is approximately equal to 2 into 1 minus rho but since rho lies between minus 1 and plus 1 the d statistics lies in between 0 and 4 that is when that is when rho is minus 1 d is equal to 4 and when rho is plus 1 d is equal to 0 now we found two bounds of d the lower bound is 0 and the upper bound is 4 any estimated d value must lie between within these limits when rho is equal to 0 d is equal to 2 that is if there is no serial correlation of the first order d is expected to be about 2 therefore we use a rule of thumb generally the rule of thumb is that if d is found to be in an application, one may assume that there is no first order autocorrelation. The closer D is to zero, the greater the evidence of positive serial correlation. And the closer D is to four, the greater the evidence of negative serial correlation. Although extremely popular the DW test has one great drawback that we do not know the exact value of critical value of D it only let you know that the critical D lies somewhere in between DL and DU this necessitate three possible outcome for the testing of the hypothesis there is no positive autocorrelation similarly three possible outcomes are there for the testing of hypothesis no negative autocorrelation the these three possible outcome can be first one if d is less d is less than dl in this case it must be lower than the critical d so we would conclude that positive autocorrelation is present we reject the null hypothesis second case if d is greater than du in this case d must be greater than critical d so we do not reject the null hypothesis and the third d lies between the lower and the upper bound in this case d might be greater than or less than critical d we do not know which which case it may be so you cannot tell whether you should reject or do not reject the null hypothesis similar outcomes can be seen in the case of testing of the hypothesis there is no auto there is no negative autocorrelation in outcomes 1 and 2 the dw test gives you a definite answer but in outcomes 3 we are left in a zone of indecision to solve this problem several others have proposed modifications of the d test but we are not going to discuss it right now let me summarize the mechanics of durbin watson test once again assuming that all the underlying assumptions are of the test are fulfilled step 1 run the OLS regression and obtain the residuals step 2 compute d using d is equal to sigma u hat t minus u hat t minus 1 all squared divided by sigma u hat t square step 3 for the given sample size and given number of explanatory variables find out the critical dl and du values and step 4 follow the decision rules we will get a more clarity on the hypothesis testing and the decision rules by looking at the 
diagram given here and the subsequent decision rules given in the table when d is equal to 2 we are in the middle of the continuum towards the left side of this middle point midpoint 2 that is from 0 to 2 is showing a showing the influence of varying degrees of positive autocorrelation to the right of the middle point of the continuum is a zone of varying degrees of negative autocorrelation let's have a look at the five possible scenarios here first if d lies in between 0 and dl we should reject the null hypothesis that there is no positive autocorrelation we reject this null hypothesis because there is a strong evidence of positive autocorrelation if d lies in between dl and du is the second case we are in a pos helpless position our null hypothesis is that there is no positive autocorrelation we have no conclusive evidence to reject or do not reject the null hypothesis therefore this region is called a region of indecision third case if d lies in between on either side of the two that is in between du and 4 minus du here our null hypothesis is that there is no autocorrelation positive or negative is found to be valid there is no strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis therefore we do not reject the null hypothesis therefore this is a region indicating no autocorrelation fourth case again a zone of indecision if d lies in between 4 minus du and 4 minus tl our null hypothesis to be tested is that there is no negative autocorrelation we do not get a strong evidence to either reject or do not reject the null hypothesis therefore this is again a zone of indecision and the last case where d lies in between 4 minus dl and 4 where our null hypothesis is that there is no negative autocorrelation our d statistics obtained thus indicate that there is a strong evidence of negative autocorrelation therefore we reject the null hypothesis the durbin watson d test has become so popular and admired by many researchers but there should be a caution on the assumptions underlying the test in particular the assumptions that the explanatory variable or regresses are not on stochastic two the error term follows the normal distribution and three that the er regression regression models do not include lagged values of the regressions are very important in the for the application of d test if a regression model contain lagged values of the regressions the d value in such case is often around 2 which would suggest that there is no first order autocorrelation in such models thus there is a built in bias against discovering first order autocorrelation in such models this does not mean that the autoregressive models do not suffer from the autocorrelation problem as a matter of fact Durbin has developed the so called H test to test serial correlation in such models. But H test is also requires non stochastic regresses and also it can be used to only for AR1 models, autoregressive order 1 models. Therefore, a more popular and powerful test known as Bruce Godfrey test is available now. Also, if the error term ut are not normally, independently and identically distributed, the routinely used d-test may not be reliable. In this respect, the runs test discussed earlier has an advantage in that it does not make any probability distributional assumption about the error term. However, if the sample is large, we call technically infinite we can use the Durbin Watson D for it can be shown that root n into 1 minus 1 by 2 D tend to follow 
normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance that is in large samples the d statistics d statistics as transformed into the above equation follow the standard normal distribution incidentally in large samples the square root of the sample size times the estimated first order autocorrelation coefficient also follows the standard normal distribution that is square root n into the autocorrelation coefficient rho tend to follow standard normal distribution with the zero mean and unit variance but the most serious problem with the d test is the assumption that the regressors are non stochastic that is their values are fixed in repeated sampling if this is not the case then the d test is not valid either in finite or small samples or in large samples and since this assumption is usually difficult to maintain in economic models involving time series data there are strong criticism against using durbin watson statistics in econometrics involving time series data therefore more useful tests of autocorrelation are available but they are all based on large samples the bruce godfrey test is an example of such test to avoid some of the pitfalls of the durbin watson d test of autocorrelation trevor trevor s bruce an australian and lesley g godfrey from britain have developed a test of autocorrelation that is general in the sense that it allows for less restrictive assumption even it allows for non stochastic regressors such as lagged values of the regressions it can also be computed when there is higher order auto regressive schemes such as ar1 ar2 etc and it can also be computed when simple or higher order moving average of white noise error terms such as epsilon t in equation ut is equal to rho ut minus 1 plus epsilon t the bruce godfrey test is based on lagrange multiplier testing therefore this test is also known as lagrange multiplier test or simply lm test we use a two variable regression model to illustrate the test although many regressors can be added to the model also lagged values of the regression can be added to the model let y t is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 x t plus u t assume that the error term u t follows the pth order auto regressive scheme arp scheme as follows u t is equal to rho 1 ut minus 1 plus rho 2 ut minus 2 plus etc plus rho p ut minus p plus epsilon t where epsilon t is the white noise error term you can recall that the equation described above is simply the extension of auto regressive scheme the null hypothesis h0 to be tested is that h0 is equal to h0 of h0 is that rho 1 equal to rho 2 equal to etc rho p all equal to zero that means there is no or serial correlation there is no auto correlation of any order the bruce godfrey test involves the following procedures during step 1 estimate yt is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 xt plus ut by ordinary least square method and obtain the residual u hat t in the second step run an auxiliary regression and obtain the r square values that is regress u hat t on the original explanatory variable xt if there is more than one explanatory variable in the original model include them also so regress u hat t on the original explanatory variable xt 
and also regress u hat t against its own lagged values that is u hat t minus 1 u hat t minus 2 and etc u hat t minus p depends on the number of lags where the later as the are the lagged values of the estimator residuals in the step 1 if rho if p is equal to 4 we will introduce four lagged values of the residual as additional regressor in the model that is u hat t is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 x t plus rho hat 1 u hat t minus 1 plus rho hat 2 u hat t minus 2 plus etc plus rho hat p u hat t minus p plus epsilon t one thing that should be kept in mind is that why do we keep original regressor or original explanatory original explanatory variable into this auxiliary regression the reason is to allow for the fact that x may may not be strictly non stochastic but if it is strictly non stochastic it can be omitted from the model if the sample size is large technically infinite bruch and godfrey have shown that asymptotically n minus p times the r square value obtained from the auxiliary regression follows the chi square distribution with the p degrees of freedom that is n minus p r square follows chi square distribution with the p degrees of freedom if in an application n minus p r square exceeds the critical chi square value at the chosen level of significance we reject the null hypothesis in which case at least one row in the above ex equation is statistically significantly different from zero if we use only one lagged value in the above equation then the bg test is equivalent to durbin's m test a dra drawback of bruch godfrey test is that the value of p that is the length of lag cannot be specified a priori some experimentation with the p value is value of p with is inevitable sometimes we can use the so called akaike information criteria or schwarz information criteria to decide on the lag length Now we have completed part 2 of the lecture on autocorrelation. I request you to learn from the two videos by repeatedly hearing the lectures. I also request you to comment on the topics discussed and shared here. For those who need any further discussions, queries or feedbacks, kindly let me know. Thank you.